in this lecture we are going to talk about approach to anemias now the definition of anemia may be 11 or 12 in the western books but in india if we look at a hemoglobin of less than 10 g per deciliter we will start calling it as anemia in the initial stages of anemia all the uh, forms of anemia look quite similar and trying to differentiate them becomes difficult over a period of time, as the anemia develops, the picture becomes clear and the diagnosis becomes easier. How do you evaluate anemia? A good, careful evaluation of the CBC report in most of the time will give us the clue to the diagnosis. However, most of the time, the anemia are classified, classified based on the size of the RBCs. They could be microcytic, they could be normocytic, and they could be macrocytic now when we see microcytic anemia that is the size of the rbcs are being smaller than the size of the nucleus of a small lymphocyte the two major differential diagnoses that come into our mind should be iron deficiency anemia and hemoglobinopathies when we talk about microcytic hypochromic anemia we are looking basically for either iron deficiency anemia or hemoglobinopathies Macrocytic anemia occurs when the RBC size are slightly normal, uh, slightly larger than the lymphocytes. So, the major differential diagnosis that we keep in our mind in this stage would be B12 or folate deficiency, liver failures, and alcohol consumption. When there is acute blood loss, the body tends to push in more of immature RBCs or the reticulocytes into the blood smear. The reticular sites are slightly larger than the normal RBCs. So, in cases of response to blood loss, also you can find slight amount of increase in the RBCs. But the major thing that we need to look for when we see macrocytosis is to evaluate for B12 and folate deficiency. Normochromic normocytic anemia includes a spectrum of all the diseases in the early stages. In addition, Anemia of chronic disorders, chronic kidney disease, aplastic anemia, pure red cell aplasia, and myelodysplastic syndromes. All these could also present as normocytic, normochromic anemia. Now, there is no nutritional deficiency, so it doesn't present as macrocytosis or microcytosis. That is a problem with the bone marrow, and we should be evaluating it. The most common thing that we will find is a hypochromic microcytic anemia and the two differential diagnoses that comes into our mind is iron deficiency anemia or thalassemia hemoglobin pathies. Right away when we look at the CBC, there are pointers that would help us make up our mind as to where we are. An increase in the red cell distribution width. Presence of increased platelets normal total rbc count these three features that is anisopoiclocytosis that is variation in the shapes and sizes which numerically can be inferred by the red red cell distribution width an increase in the red cell distribution width an increase in the platelet counts and a total normal total rbc count all these would be more in favor of iron deficiency anemia. On the other hand, a normal red cell distribution with presence of fragmented cells or schistocytes, presence of polychromasia that is increased production of immature RBCs, presence of normoblasts that is nucleated RBCs, and the Menzers index. The Menzers index is defined as a mean corpuscular volume divided by the total RBC count. A Menzer's count less than 13 would suggest thalassemias. So when we're looking at a CBC, the pointers that we are looking for is look for the RDWs, that is the red cell distribution width, look for the total RBC count. From here we get the Menzer's index, look for presence of increased platelets, platelets. look for fragmented RBCs look for normal blast. All these pointers will help us identify the kind of hypochromic microcytic anemia. Now this is a classical picture of iron deficiency anemia. 
this is the lymphocyte nucleus of a lymphocyte and look at the rbcs they are smaller in size and if you look at the rbcs the central pallor is very less so it is hypochromic and microcytic you can see that there's lot of variations in the shapes and sizes of this rbc that is numerically evaluated by the parameter called red cell distribution width and the presence of these elongated cells called the pencil cells these are all hallmarks of iron deficiency anemia a good iron studies would further elucidate this problem in hemolytic anemia as i talked about the menzers index that is the mean corpuscular volume divided by the total rbc count now in beta thalassemia trait the rbcs are being destroyed as a result of which the bone marrow goes in a overdrive to produce more and more immature rbcs into the peripheral blood so the mean corpuscular volume is low but the total rbc count is high if you take a ratio of the mean corpuscular volume to the total rbc count they have cut off a, they made a figure of 13 as a arbitrary cut off any values less than 13 indicates that more rbcs are coming into the system and that would be more in favor of a beta thalassemia values greater than 13 would suggest iron deficiency anemia now that's the first thing that you're looking for in the menzers index a low m a low mcv means corpuscular volume increased rbc counts menzers index and your um, menzers index and red cell distribution width by looking at these figures itself you would be having a clear picture are we dealing with iron deficiency anemia or are we dealing with hemolytic anemia now when you're looking under the microscope the hallmarks that you should look for is presence of these fragmented rbcs presence of fragmented rbc now they are not microcytes they are all really small bro broken up fragments of the rbc presence of fragmented rbcs of more than 1% would suggest hemolytic anemia now if you have a, when the rbcs are being destroyed at a fast rate the bone marrow in response will try to produce more rbcs to capture the blood loss to counteract the blood loss and the immature rbcs will show what is called polychromasia do you see these rbcs and you look at this that is there's one here there's one here these are the cells which have a light bluish tinge these are polychromasias or they are early rbcs which are coming to the blood vessels into the blood into the blood so presence of schistocytes presence of polychromasia will suggest hemolytic anemia now another feature which you would look for is sometimes you may find these sickle cells which will give away the diagnosis it's important to differentiate a sickle cell from a pencil form the most important feature being that the central pallor is absent so if you look at these elongated cells don't get trigger happy and call them as uh, sickle cells sickle cells will not have the central pallor whereas the uh pencil cells will have the central pallor now uh, this is another example of polychromasia you can see that there is a slight change in the color of these rbcs compared to the normal rbcs but this difference is not very glaring so that's why the staining characteristics of your smear should be good if you hope to pick up these kind of differences this is an example of multiple schistocytes fragmented rbcs and this is a normoblast that is an rbc with a nucleus how do you differentiate this from a lymphocyte because it will be the most common thing look at the cytoplasm the cytoplasm will be having color very similar to the hemoglobin since the cytoplasm has got hemoglobin the color of the cytoplasm will be similar or tending to go towards an rbc whereas in a lymphocyte the cytoplasm will be blue another thing is a lymphocyte will have that football type of an appearance areas where there are euchromatin and heterochromatin so the staining characteristics will be vague whereas in the normoblast it will appear as a 
uh, as an ink drop. So these are the features that you should know. The moment you see normoblast and polychromasia, you infer that the bone marrow is doing over time. And then you need to look whether this was as a result of hemolysis or if there was an iron deficiency anemia and you have treated it appropriately, then also the marrow will start producing more and more RBCs. So then also you can get polychromasia and normoblast. So you need to interpret the report in the light of the patient. Another thing that you can see in a smear which will give you a diagnosis of the cause for hemolysis is presence of spherocytes or microspherocytes. In hereditary spherocytosis, you will see spherocytes. And what are spherocytes? Look at these RBCs. They're slightly large. They have the central pallor. Whereas these are the spherocytes. Smaller in shape, lack of central pallor, darkly staining. So these spherocytes may suggest the diagnosis of hereditary spherocytosis. And other condition where you can find these microspherocytes is when the blood when a patient has received a blood transfusion this picture you can see that there are some rbcs which are having the central pallor and there is another set of rbcs which do not have the central pallor this would actually be post transfusion here you're seeing schistocytes and you're seeing microspherocytes so this would be more likely to be a case of hereditary spherocytosis. And again, to highlight a concept on the subtlety of polychromasia, look at these cells and look at these cells. There is a slight difference in the staining characteristics. This one is polychromasia. Generally, cells with polychromasia tend to have a slightly larger size. So this slide I'm giving you to observe it note down your features and we will discuss another slide observe the slide note down your features we will discuss about this these images i will share it up in the platform the major differential diagnosis that comes with iron deficiency anemia is thalassemia major. Now, thalassemia major also presents with minor hypochromic cells as much as iron deficiency anemia. There are fragmented cells and the fragmented cells may give an illusion of polychromasia compared to an iron deficiency anemia. But the hallmark is presence of fragmented cells compared to a thin, hypochromic, microcytic, but intact RBC. You don't see fragmented cells here as much as you see these kinds of fragmented cells. Presence of normoblasts. This will all favor the diagnosis of thalassemia, whereas in iron deficiency anemia, you will just get uh, RBCs which are smaller in size and thin rim of hemoglobin. In case you have a doubt, then you can do further iron studies. In thalassemia, the iron stores are going to be normal, whereas in iron deficiency anemia, the iron stores are going to be less. So that can help the picture. Further problems, if you have, go in for doing an HPLC to elucidate whether it was a thalassemia or an iron deficiency anemia. But more often than not, presence of fragmented cells, presence of normoblast, presence of severe transfusion dependent anemia will all favor the diagnosis of thalassemia major. And iron studies, which is normal, will favor the diagnosis of thalassemia major. And iron studies, which is showing iron deficiency, would favor the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. The next anemia we're going to talk about is macrocytic anemia. By the sheer word, macrocytosis means that the RBCs are normally larger. B12 or folate deficiency is characterized by cytopenia, usually pancytopenia. There will be a decrease in the total RBC count, there will be a decrease in the total WBC count, there will be a decrease in the platelets. Then, presence of these large cells, macrocytes, 
this is slightly oval in shape so this is a macro ovalocyte so presence of macro ovalocytes and macrocytes would favor a diagnosis of b12 or folate deficiency anemia and the characteristic feature of it is presence of hyper segmented neutrophils five neutrophils with more than five lobes or one neutrophil with more than six lobes is suggestive of hyper segmented neutrophils so the three things that you are looking for is presence of macrocytes and macro ovalocytes presence of hyper segmented neutrophils and presence of cytopenia these would be suggesting the diagnosis of b12 and folate deficiency you cannot differentiate b12 and folate deficiency just looking on a smear and honestly that differentiation is not required another feature which if you really start straining your eyes and looking into the smear may not add any value into the diagnosis but just a curiosity is presence of these rings in the rbc called cabot rings now cabot rings are remnants of the nucleus spindle material which is used in the separation of the cells so you could get these kind of cabot rings they could be a normal ring structure they could be in a figure of eight structure important thing to know about it is in the backdrop of macrocytic anemia if you see an rbc having a ring do not be trigger happy in calling it a malarial parasite that was the point why i got this concept of cabot ring macrocytic anemia is characterized by megaloblastic anemia is characterized by increase in the ldh levels in the blood and this is because there is a massive amount of ineffective erythropoiesis occurring in the marrow that is the rbcs are trying to mature but it's not mature so it breaks down the rbc what comes in the blood uh, blood vessels are a small fraction of the number of rbcs that actually tried to become a mature rbc and got destroyed in the bone marrow so because of increased cell turnover in the marrow with lot of cell destruction cytoplasmic contents are being released and we know that ldh is a marker of cytoplasmic content so increased ldh suggestive of ineffective erythropoiesis is seen in megaloblastic anemia now it's very very rare that a person who is having some nutritional deficiency either not taking iron would only be not taking iron and would be taking b12 so what i'm trying to sell over here is that when nutritional deficiency occurs because of improper intake both iron and b12 concomitantly be deficient so you'll get smears like this where there are small rbcs there is an isocytosis and there are large macro ovalocytes also in the same smear you're seeing microcytic rbcs here this is a small rbc this is the size of a nucleus of a lymphocyte for comparison and you're getting this macro ovalocytes also and if you look properly you will find hypersegmented neutrophils so when you see features of both microcytic hypochromic and macrocytic anemias you're looking for nutritional deficiency anemias liver disease is characterized by alteration in the lipid metabolism the size of the cell membrane becomes large because of increased lipid deposition and this results in an appearance which is called target cells presence of these target cells would suggest that the size of the membrane of the rbc is more than the volume usually seen in liver disease and alcohol abuse hepatitis c virus also produces a large number of target cells it is just a curiosity finding another thing which i said was reactive microcytosis macrocytosis now when a person has lost blood the bone marrow works over time to produce rbcs to capture to counter the anemia as a result of it you get this immature rbcs come into the blood vessel giving you a polychromasia kind of a appearance 
If you do a special stain called the retic stain, you will find that the reticulocyte counts are also increased. So that will be obvious loss of blood. There will be a polychromasia and there will be increased in reticulocyte count. All these would suggest that this is a reactive macrocytosis, reactive to blood loss. Normochromic normocytic anemia is actually a big Pandora's box. It would usually present in the early stages of anemia, so a study for iron, B12 and all will be warranted. Hemolytic anemias in the early stages and including beta thal, most often they not appear as normochromic normocytic anemia. Anemia of chronic disorders, anemia and kidney failures, anemia and bone marrow failures, all of them will also have a normochromic normocytic picture. So a comprehensive evaluation of the patient, treatment and watching the response to treatment with iron and iron supplements and B12 and failure to show any response to conventional treatment would warrant a complete workup. So to summarize, microcytic anemia, the differential diagnosis in your mind are iron versus thalassemia, red distribution, a red cell distribution with platelet count, Benzers index, schistocytes, and polychromasia. These are the features you're going to look into the smear, which will help you differentiate iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia. Also, look for macroovalocytes, hypersegmented neutrophils, eosinophilias. Eosinophilia is suggestive of worm infection. Macroovalocytes and hypersegmented neutrophils would also suggest that there's concomitant nutritional deficiency anemia. Look for any obvious shapes in the RVCs like hereditary spirocytosis and sickle cells. Differential diagnosis of macrocytic anemia would be folate, B12 deficiency, alcohol, liver, or reactive. Cytopenias, macrocytes, macroovalocytes, hypersegmented neutrophils, cabot rings. All these will favor the diagnosis of folate, B12 deficiency anemia. Presence of target cells would suggest alcohol induced alcohol or liver disease. Presence of polychromasia, increased reticulocyte count on a backdrop of an obvious reason of blood loss would suggest reactive macrocytosis. And the last slide identify the features of this smear and make your diagnosis. Thank you.